Right guys, um, this is Bookends Allotment, so I'm not at the allotment, but I'm just going to show you a short video of our harvest that we did today. So, we've got a few strawberries, let's just show you these strawberries. I think, there we go, that's zoomed out, that's better. There we go. There's some rather large ones in here, which are quite nice, as you can see, compared to my hand. All various sizes. The missus is going to be making some strawberry jam with them. And I love strawberry jam on toast. So she made six jars out of the last lot. I think she's going to get a few more out of this. And we did a broccoli harvest today. And it is Iron Man F1. There we go. Look at them little beauties. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't count them. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten sprigs or tops or whatever you want to call them. And there we go. It's quite a large compared to my hand as you can see. We've snipped them off, left the plant in the ground and I've cut across in the top. So from what the boss tells me, the missus, it helps to produce more side shoots of broccoli, the smaller ones, so we can uh, have those as well. So this little lot, I'm quite happy. It's uh, coming on, the plot is starting to give us what we want after our little mishaps, so uh, I'll give you an update later on. See you soon. Hello and welcome to Bookends Allotment on Saturday the 29th, the hottest day of the year and I'm sweating my cobs off. It is 5 to 11. Um, the structure I'm going to be showing you next is for Woody on Cumbrian Homestead. If you go on to Cliffs, uh, Castle Hill, he does an excellent video on how to make this one structure for you. We followed it, but I'm no carpenter, as I've said on my videos before. And uh, I have to move mine around a little bit. It does, the beds aren't exactly the same as Cliff's are. He can just move his from bed to bed. Mine, I just have to play around a little bit and fix them on. But right, I will just walk you up the allotment. I'll just turn you around and show you the beautiful array of my sweet peas. So here we go. You will have to excuse the shaky. It's moving around. There they are. Beautiful, aren't they? Absolutely. Right, let's just take you down and show you this structure. I started sweating when I came up here and I was only standing still. So, this is going to be the winter brassica bed. This is the structure. It's like a little house. It's joined together via the brackets there. Well, not brackets, wood cut to the shape. Cliff does show you an awful lot on this. But what I do, as we put it right next to the next door neighbor's fence, I attach the green mesh to the other side. So it's all on and ready for planting. But as you can see, it's just a piece of wood cut to the shape of the, the down pieces, attached via a piece of wood which goes across just to there. Exactly the same, this side, and again for the others. It takes about one, two, three, five on this bed to actually do this framework. It serves its purpose and uh, as you've seen from our previous videos when it was over on the potato section there we had some lovely brassicas out of it and sprouts so that's what's going to be going in this bed as well the sprouts ready for Christmas. I know we're a little bit late but it's just one of those things this year everything seems to be late. I can't get over the parsnips they are really coming on really nice this year and the swiss chard i've seemed to have uh, picked up as well i'll just show you one of our other structures that mike was interested in this one has got our onions 
and air leaks. So I'm not going to leave it up long because the onion fly, I don't want it to get in. A lot of people have put, got pieces of wood and they've drilled and actually put the pipe into the wood. But uh, I've actually used, as you can see down there, hold on, I'll zoom into it. Excuse the shakes. A nut and bolt through. But a lot of people have used this, like I said, the size of wood. They've got a drill bit and they pushed the pipe straight into the wood, which I think is a brilliant idea. I'm gonna pop that down. But uh, we knew we weren't gonna be having very big beds, wide beds, I should say, so that serves its purpose really well. It does. The cage, that was up when we actually came here. So luckily I didn't have to build that. And it is like a little mini environment in there. Wherever we put in there, really, really grows well. I'll just show you some of the, uh, we had a tidy up of the strawberries the other day and we've given them a feed with some of the seaweed feed that you can get. But those have gone mad, literally. So it is like a little mini environment in here. And then we are so pleased that we did put some onions over the other side because we had a disaster with the other ones. And uh, those are coming on nicely, the tomatoes. <laughs> here we go, there we go. Look at those little beauties. I know they're not as big as some people's, but to me, they are beautiful. So I haven't caught another mouse in my environmentally friendly mouse trap. I think uh, I think um, we've had him, so he's he's a mile away now. Unless he can walk a mile and come back, there's nothing in there at all. We put some cheese on there; it 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 went, but nothing in there. So it was either something else, or birds, or whatever ate it, and. Uh, no mice, thankfully. The missus has done a good weeding of the bed. So I'll just show you the other little structure. This one we just use the crisscrossing of the blue pipes. We put them first one on the end and then we just do a loop across to one side and then over to the other side. And I actually fix all three with a screw straight through all three pieces of pipe so it holds them sturdy. These we get from, I think, from Wilco's. They're the clips, which they're just the right size for clipping onto the pipe and holding the netting in place. So if we want to take it off and it does need a good weeding, we can just unclip them, slide them down, do the work and pop it back up. So that's that structure, it's easy enough to put together and it works. We've got that measured out for most of the beds here so we can use it on any of them, not like that wooden structure. But our poor peas are not looking healthy at all. We have had some, as you can see, they're filling out nicely. But they're very yellow. We don't know why, we grew them in the cage last year and they literally went to the top of the cage. And that cage has got to be about 12, 14 foot, I would say, at a rough guess. But they're looking a little bit sick. So I've given them a good feed of the seaweed feed today. See if we can give them a perk up on the warmest day of the year. And these, I've got to show you these. These are coming on really nice. They're the pumpkins. Look at him. He's He's gone nuts. Lengthwise, beautiful. Good look at that. Lovely. And the next one to it is coming on as well. So, yes, everything's starting to grow. And uh, some of the structures are new structures which we put up this year. Same as these. They are just L-shaped uh, metal work. They have got holes in them but we just knock them into the ground to the required height of the covered uh, netting, wire netting, mesh. Well, it's not mesh really, it's a net. And uh, I just zip tied it on. So next year, 
Well, when we take them down in the uh, autumn, I just unscrew the screw from the bottom, but I'll clip, cut these off and pull them out, and I've got them ready for next year. We can just put them straight back into the same bed, and we're uh, up and ready, which will be a little bit easier. They're obelisk there. We're hoping to grow something up that, but it's just don't seem to want to come at the moment. But yes, all looking good. And those in there as well are starting to get their feet. And the sunflowers. They're not very big, not as big as other people's, but I am pleased. The tomatoes. Uh, let's have a look. These are black Russians. And those with the larger canes are the Crimson Crush. Yes, we've got tomatoes coming on these as well. We gave those a feed yesterday. We only give it once a week. But it's coming on. I'm happy. Sweet peas are glorious. They are. Showing their heads, lovely. Next to the potatoes, which I might do a potato reveal. I'm just going to see how I get on with this framework. So, Woody, Cumbrian Homestead. Hope you enjoy this little bit of a video for you and uh, it helps you and have a look at cliffs like I said at Castle Hill. He is fantastic on his woodwork. So I'll uh, speak to you soon. See you later. Right there we go the finished article. The two ends like I said have been covered ready. They've all it's just been stapled on and uh, all we've got to do now is Weed it, well, it's been weeded. Dig it over a bit, a bit more fish blood and bone, put the plants in and then just drape the netting over it. I might be going to put something on the corners like the pipe insulation to stop it from catching the net and maybe across the top as well because you have got some jagged edges and this stuff catches so easily. So that's that done ready for the brassicas for winter. Speak to you soon. Right, just a little idea that the wife had, it's a good idea actually. Piece of piping with the canes put in, zip tied to her fence, and she's actually put it into a pot at the bottom. There we go. So if it rains, the water runs out, but it keeps the canes all nice and tidy. Fantastic little idea, I think. Maybe one to use, guys. Nice little tidy. See you soon. Right, guys, just one more thing on this structure, which I forgot to say. How I fix them is my beds, I've got these posts in them, all the way along, where the wood I needed to join to it. So what I do, dig a hole, and screw it to it. You'll have to excuse the sniffing. Um, the hay fever's playing up, playing up a bit now. We came, we went for lunch, and the time is just gone seven o'clock. So we will be doing a potato reveal in a bit. So I'll give you an update on that. See you soon. Right, I'm excited. We're going to do our first potato reveal. These are Charlotte's, and they were planted on the 26th of the 3rd, 19th. So, I can see some potatoes on the top, so let's have a look, shall we? Let's get rid of these top bits. First. Pop them down there. I'll go back on the compost heap. see potatoes already. Right, here we go. They're in a 30 litre bucket and looking good. Looking good. Right. Let's get these apart. Get rid of the slugs. Don't want those. Over there. Here we go. Look at these little beauties. Nice. 
I had 71 pound of potatoes last year. I'm hoping to beat that this year. And it looks like it's going to be a good start. Yeah. A few small ones, but you have to expect that. There's the seed potato. There's some real nice size on there compared to my hand. And some little ones. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, that's all that one. Let's turn. Yeah. Right, I'll be taking some of these tomorrow, which is Sunday the 30th, up to Himley Hall, which is Forces Day, and having them as a potato salad. I will be really looking forward to these. And it looks good. There again, that's the seed one, out of the way. And this one as well, yep. Give them a good shake off, we can use that compost and something. Give it a good sieving. Right. Here we go, look at these. Oh, oh. yes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I will weigh them when I get home. Don't want the little ones, it's not really worth having those, but these just boil down nicely for that potato salad. Yeah, yeah and two more. Gorgeous. Not me, the potatoes, because the wife's definitely not into that. I'm not gorgeous. Spuds are. But yeah, lovely. Happy, 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 happy. Right, I'll put them out on top so you can see them. And if my wife gets up, there we go. Nice little harvest of potatoes. They look in good condition as well. So those will go down tasty with a salad tomorrow. So from myself, it's bye bye for now and thank you for subscribing and Jan. Yep, goodbye for now and uh, thank you for viewing. See you on the next video. Bye for now.